Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to look at the top rookies in 2024 Top Series 2. The checklist for 2024 Top Series 2 was finally released this morning. This set comes out next week, and I've been waiting for that product checklist to be released because I wanted to see which rookies are and are not included. One thing I do want to know about this checklist, you will not be seeing Jackson Holiday or Jackson Cheerio there being held till update. Update might be a really great set with those two players as a headliner. I know neither have been huge success stories in the big league so far, but that's not that abnormal for prospects. Mike Trout wasn't that great when he debuted in 2011. It was until 2012 he became Mike Trout. But on this checklist, there are some strong names. It's not super deep. And so instead of having top 15, I did just top 10 because I don't think this set deserved a top 15 to be fully transparent. The way that I do these lists, I'm actually going to show you number 10, which is Noah V. Marte for the Cincinnati Reds. I do it based off of age, prospect ranking slash international status, minor league slash international stats, and major league stats. I usually just do prospect ranking and minor league stats and I won't really include like hype around a player for international signing, but Yamamoto, we also have Imanaga and a few other players who were international signings that were big international signings that I didn't think it was fair to give them a zero and have them be lower when realistically they would have been unanimous top 10 prospects if they would have been prospects. And so for that purpose, I actually including both in those stats. Either way, what I do is I will add them all up and divide it by four to give you an average score. And that's how I'm ranking these. Age is important because you want a young player in collecting cards to give them longevity to gain value. Prospect status is important because people who actually care and know about prospects, they have identified these players as good. Minor league stats are important because you want a player to be good in the minor leagues, and major league stats are important because you have to perform at the big league level. But at number 10, we have Novi Marte. And you might say, why is he so low? He has a score of seven. As an example, Heston Kierstead is actually a 5.25. So should Novi Marte be higher? Yeah, you could argue he should be higher, but he got caught doing steroids. And so he's actually not played this year so far. He's been a top prospect for years, but being hit with a PD suspension and missing, I think, 80 or so games has been really bad for him and may hurt his actual value in the card collecting world long term. Either way, with that being said, I still think he deserves a top 10 spot of all the rookies on this checklist, but I just put him there because I wanted you to know about that. Either way, he has 0.8 war and only 114 at bats with a 316 batting average and a 120 OPS plus as a basically a rookie last year. I don't know if he actually hit his rookie qualifying number of games at that point, but either way, his rookie cards are this year. And if we look at his actual prospect status, he is a top 20 prospect. His minor league stats are good. I wouldn't say they're amazing, right? Like last year in double AA, A, triple A, and rookie ball, he had. 11 home runs, a 279 batting average, and an 812 OPS. But we can see that he's been a very highly touted prospect for years. And that's why I gave him a six on minor league stats. It wasn't like it was mind blowing. And I also gave him a six on major league stats. That's where he is at for number 10. At number nine, I already kind of ruined the surprise, is Heston Kierstedt for the Baltimore Orioles. He is 25 years old. He, I believe he might've been a number one overall pick. If not, he was the Orioles first round pick that year when he was drafted. And he was a high prospect. We can go look at him real quick. Here he is. He's had prospect rankings in the past, but heading into this season, he was a top 30 for major league baseball and then top four for Baseball American Baseball Prospectus. And if we scroll down, we can see he's been absolutely killing it in the minor leagues. 325 batting average, 412 OBP with a 1.081 OPS. That's crazy. 14 home runs, only 40 games is crazy. If we scroll down, we'll see the minor leagues for his whole career have been great. 308 batting average, 920 OPS, and so forth. So that's why he scored so high in minor league stats. But unfortunately, in the big leagues, he's not been the same player. This year, he's been league average when it comes to war, 0.0. But his OPS OPS plus is 35 and his OPS is 437. I don't think he even has a home run. No, zero home runs so far this particular year. He just not got it going yet. I know it's a small sample size, but regardless, that is where he's at on this list. At number eight, we have Shota Imanaga. You could say, why is he so low? He is the Cy Young candidate right now. Probably the leading Cy Young candidate right now. That's because he's 30 years old. He is a 30-year-old foreign pitcher coming to the big leagues. That is hard to have a ton of value, even if you do have success. Regardless, if I wanted to say, you know, if we gave him a six, let's say he was 25 years old or 24 years old, he probably would have been top two on this list because I gave him for international status. I included that this time, like I mentioned because I didn't think it was fair to give him a zero when he obviously was highly sought after because they paid him a big contract. Multiple teams were after him. 
And his minor league stats, actually his international stats, I should say, were great. And his big league stats are probably the best on the whole list with a nine. So that is Shota Imanaga. And he will have some collectability for international appeal as well as being a Cubs fan favorite potentially. So interesting player to target. At number seven, we have another international player, Jung Ho Lee. Jung Ho Lee came over from, I believe, the KBO. I don't think it was the MPB. I think it was the KBO. And he was the KBO MVP two years ago. And his stats in the KBO are great, right? Here he is from age 18 through age 24. He's been awesome. He had 349 batting average and won the MVP two years ago with 23 home runs, 113 RBI. Year prior hit 360. Year before that, 333, 30, 36, 355. You get the idea. He's supposed to have been this amazing hitter and he could have been. He was a pretty good hitter. His OPS plus, where was it? About league average, 90, but he hadn't quite adjusted to Major League Baseball yet. And unfortunately, he hurt his shoulder in the outfield and is now out for the year. And so that does hurt his collectability. They signed him for a pretty long contract, a pretty large contract, the Giants that is, and that's before a posting fee. The posting fee made it even more expensive. He actually got significantly more money than a lot of people were expecting in this offseason. But with that being said, 25 years old, he has international status is really high. I'd argue higher than Imanaga heading into this season. Minor league stats, well, international stats were really high as well. Probably some of the best you can have in the KBO. He was the MVP two years ago. And his major league stats, I gave him a three uh, because he is technically below low league average in a lot of ways for an overall score of six. At number six, we have Kyle Harrison for the San Francisco Giants. Let's show him real quick. He is 22 years old. He is a top 30 prospect. He has above average uh, minor league stats. Like his stuff, I think, is where they're getting a lot of his prospect status from, but nothing like mind blowing. And his major league stats have not been great so far. So let's go down to his actual minor league stats. Only 22 again, which is fantastic. You can see his top 20, top 20, and top 40. And so that's why I believe I gave him a seven to kind of average it out. Maybe I gave him eight or two. I don't know. But either way, we can look this last year in 2023, he had a 4.52 ERA, right? That wasn't great. Before that, he was actually having a lot lower ERA. And this year in the big leagues, he has an ERA over four as well. So that is why Kyle Harrison is not higher, but Kyle Harrison still has a ton of potential. He is a top prospect for a reason. He has all the stuff in the world. He just needs to figure it out, which is totally possible in San Francisco. At number five, we have Jordan Lawler. There's another player who's been dealing with injuries. He's been great in the minor leagues. He has an extremely high prospect ranking, only 21 years old, which is why he has nine points, nine points for prospect ranking and eight points for minor league stats. He just has not been great in the big leagues. He hasn't really had a chance in the big leagues. He only had a couple games. Like let's look how many games he's actually played four. So you can say, yeah, that's a bit overblown. That gave him such a low number. But the reason I didn't give him higher is because he's hurt and he's just starting his minor league rehab, I believe like today or tomorrow. So for that reason, Jordan Lawler, I gave him a low score for the big leagues. He's not going to be playing much this year in the big leagues, even though his rookie is this year. You might not see him in the big leagues until the very end of the season or until the next year, probably the end of the season, depending on how he plays. But Jordan Lawler, he has a ton of potential. Arizona Diamondbacks top prospect, great player. Now we have Pete Crow Armstrong. Pete Crow Armstrong, he was kind of blocked by Cody Bellinger at first, but I believe he's with the big league club and playing well now, right? 0.8 war. I believe that's defensive war heavy. We can check in a moment, but he's an 80 OPS plus, 632 OPS. League average is down overall. So a 632 OPS is not nearly as bad as it sounds when you look at league averages. Either way, one home run, 235 batting average. Hasn't been quite amazing yet, but we can see he is a top 18, 16, and 20 prospect according to all the major publications. Scroll down even further for his minor league stats. Has an 883 OPS with a 296 batting average with good plus defense in the outfield. That's why Pete Crow Armstrong is so high. But that is him at number four. I gave him an eight for 22 because he's 22 years old. Top prospect rankings, top 10. Uh, well, in the top 10s. And then we have minor league stats were good. Big league stats are okay for a score of seven. At number three, we have Mason Wynn. I watch a lot of Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado at bats because I like them both. Both are brutal at bats to watch right now. But either way, Mason Wynn has looked really good in the Cardinals lineup. He actually has a 7.5 for Major League stats, which we'll get to. Only 22. He still was a pretty high prospect in the 40s, as well as minor league stats were pretty good. So here is Mason Wynn. Mason Wynn has 2.3 war this year with a 130 OPS plus. And he hasn't even really slugged all that much yet. But an OBP for a 359 for a shortstop is pretty solid. I believe he's the one who throws like a 100 
100 miles an hour from shortstop. He makes a lot of great plays that way. Also has quite a few errors, but he can make up for it by having a ton of outs that the average shortstop does not have the arm strength to get. So Mason Wynn, kind of a stud. If we scroll down, let's go look at his minor league stats real fast. We can see last year in AAA, 288 batting average with an 834 OPS with 18 home runs. That's kind of what he's projecting to be right now with a little bit less power, like I mentioned in regards to actual home runs. But either way, Mason Wynn, he's kind of surprised a lot of people, and he could be a top target, especially for Cardinals fans this year in this product. At number two, we have Junior Caminero for the Tampa Bay Rays. He is 20 years old, which is crazy. He is a top 10 prospect. He has been great. Well, he's been good, above average in the minor leagues. He has a seven. And he's just not been good in the big leagues yet. I don't think he's even been in the big leagues this year. I think he's been held down. And the bad thing is in the minor leagues, he hasn't been that great this particular year, which is why his minor league stats isn't higher. So if we go over to his minor league stats, we can see number three prospect, number four prospect, number three prospect. If we scroll down, his minor league stats look great with a 921 open. He has a 308 batting average. You might say, why does he not have a higher score than seven? The reason for that is because he is not doing that good this year in AAA, and he's not even in the big leagues yet. He has a 261 batting average with an 812 OPS in AAA. That's worth noting because he's 20 years old, which means that's really, really good for a AAA player. The average player in AAA, I think, is like 25 or 26. So he's basically six years younger. Oh, yeah, 6.6 years younger than the average AAA player. So Junior Caminero, he is probably the most highly touted player player on this checklist from like a prospect perspective. But at number one, we have Yoshinobu Yamamoto for the Los Angeles Dodgers, who unanimously, in my opinion, is the best player to target right now. He's a pitcher though. So you could say that's going to hurt his value. It absolutely could. He actually signed, I believe, the largest pitching contract in Major League Baseball history before even pitching in the big leagues. And that is because he was that good in Japan. I think he won like three MVP awards, not Cy Young. I think like MVP awards, why he's age 24 season, one title, all these different things. He's been good. So if you look at his overall foreign stats, he has a 1.72 ERA with 75 wins, 30 losses, and overall very solid with great stuff, multiple pitches. He's a really good pitcher. Hasn't translated that much yet because he has a three point. 0.32 ERA, but that's with him getting absolutely annihilated in his first game in Korea, which did not help against the Padres. He's starting to show who he is, which is a very dominant pitcher. And if he's able to be the pitcher that he's projected to be and is worth that contract, then he could be the best target in this set. And maybe 2023, who knows? Pitchers are brutal to collect. Be careful with pitchers. But that is why Yamamoto is my number one player on this list. Even though he is 25 years old, he has a 10 for international and prospect status. He's 10 for international stats. And in the big leagues, he's still been really good this year with a seven overall. So he has an eight, definitely one of the highest scores. And those are my top 10 players I would target opening this product. Let me know in the comments down below if I missed any players that you personally like or if I ranked anybody too highly or too lowly. Other than that, enjoy ripping the product. Let me know what you pull and I'll see you in the next video.